get back into desert mode. Last time on Open Gaming License 1.0a, uh, <laughs> Zoez learned the status of his mentor and a top tier Moon Lane Shepherd, Alina Moonstride. She is atoning for some event at an unknown location at the behest of uh, the High Priestess of Amonitor, the Merchant Queen, Zozare Raincaller, and her Xavier. Um, absorbing this knowledge, Zoe has returned to the troop. He has been shepherding across Corsair in time to hear Chuman's tale about what he had perceived when picking up the Ember Blade and had an overall discussion about the Goblin Paisley's reaction and what the implications are of this uh, holding onto this weapon are in turn. <coughs> uh, Michaela had a fuzzy awakening when an uncountable number of banner-tailed kangaroo rats all shrieked encouragement at her simultaneously and uh, later took a walk to stretch her legs, asking uh, a few merchants over uh, a late-night juice bar. It was learned that certain ores and ingots were selling rapidly. Um, and then winding down for the evening, <coughs> a mysterious letter slipped under the door. Zalia attempted to read it, but even turning it upside down had no avail, so she just tossed it over to Twig. And uh, Twig, harboring some suspicion about the staff of the Fanged Badger, crept downstairs and was hailed by a familiar face. Meeting them outside, they suddenly pounced on Twig out of invisibility. So here we are, Twig, facing your arch nemesis, the Dark Alley. Uh, pinning you down is a well-built, maned Leonin. You can see the purple-pink feathers in his mane and uh, the other accessories he's chosen to adorn himself, kind of... Um, he, like, he's got some, like, a few ear cuffs, mane cuffs, and he's got, like, a necklace of chain pendants that are kind of dangling down a bit. He's wearing a brown vest that barely covers his chest, and he's got a shoulder guard made of raptor scales. Uh, Fancy. Green and yellow ones. Uh, he grins, this toothy grin, demanding your attention. You have nowhere to look as he's on top of you, but into the golden eyes of this predator. Well, I'm glad to see your twig. Though it will be the last time. I'm glad I got to here first. Anyone else would try to spin me yarn, but you know I hate yarns. <laughs> Look, there's no time to explain. He looks around briefly and wets his lips and then comes back down to you. Uh, still holding you, pressing you into the ground, into the sand. Uh, we, we slipped into that flash mid the queen's been hoarding there. Zom called the shots and made that old moon wart cry, but it's all for Anna, see? Uh, there's something in there, we know it, but we skimmed a bit off the top and some of it followed us out. You hear me, Twig? You got Dormant, he's after me next. But you, you're safe. It's in the Doyfall, where I put that thing that time. Uh, Mad Ash looks up toward the direction that you came. Uh, you can see the color drain from his fur, uh, and his eyes get just wide as dinner plates. So we're just gonna follow his gaze and see what he's looking at. Okay. Uh, make a perception check as he uh, kind of lifts up a bit of the force, uh, holding you down. What do we got? An eleven. Dang, you really are the lookout. Um, <laughs> you oh. you kind of like crane your neck and uh, try to following it's, it's behind you and he's holding you down on the ground so it's a little tough um, but you do have a good look of, it, of at least the bottom half of the alley uh, or sorry the entrance to the alley um, but you don't see anyone there uh, or at least in your there, there's there's no figure in your field of view um Is... You, you can you can you can hear him curse, ah, swoggle. 
Twig's just gonna say, what's going on? Did you see something? Uh, you can hear him, or not hear him, yeah, you can hear him breathing. I mean, you can see his, I mean, see his chest, like, in, um, inflating and uh, rising and falling. And as he seems uh, suddenly terrified, <laughs> and he kind of, like, scrabbles back forward and uh, off of you, and, he's, and he just looks at you, and um, he can only answer your question with, don't follow me. Uh, not just Anna's counting on you here. Bye-bye. And he runs off as fast as he can. Just you technically can make an attack of opportunity. <laughs> uh. <laughs> if you just feel like killing people. No, thank you. I think I'll restrain myself. You can, so he's gonna go ahead. You can hear the the, the paw pads of Mad Ash as he mad dashes uh, away from you, just kicking up sand. So he will like make for him, but he'll take a glance over his shoulder first to see if he can see what got him so spooked. Okay. Uh, you are uh, able to like sit up and you like kind of. Reach, reach towards where he, where he's going. Uh, then you take a tentative glance over your shoulder. Your head slowly turns. Make a perception check. This this is the one. This is the Twenty. All right. Uh, Fifteen. <laughs> your head slowly turns. Your eyes take a gaze back behind you. There's nothing there. The only thing you see is the uh, sand on the ground. There's uh, just stuff hanging and uh, flapping in the wind on the um, awnings and walls. You can see um, out into the street a little bit from where it dips down into a canal. I'll try to go to the other side of the alley where Madash went, just to see if I can see which direction he went in. Okay. Um, yeah, so you get out and dust yourself off at the sand. Um, that would be a survival check. Unless, or if you're trying to track him, or just a perception if you're trying to, like, see him. I'm just trying to see which direction he went, so probably survival. Okay. Check left, you check right, check forward, check up, um, look around. You can see like the big, huge lion paws, uh, lion paw prints in the sand. Looks like he uh, went left out of this alley and then continued on that way. Um, is indecisive. Okay. You can hear. No uh, Go ahead. Your your fifteen for perception is still intact. You can hear steps behind you, just like soft. Like oh, the fifteen is pretty good. And, <laughs> uh, you can hear like soft, just pops, just. Just, uh, walking pace. Is there anyone, uh, anyone visible? You quickly turn around, and, uh, no, there is not. Are there any footsteps in the sand? They're coming towards you. <laughs> uh, Twig's gonna keep going, but he'll split the opposite direction from where Madash went. Okay. Uh, so you scoot out of the alley and, uh, turn right. Out of the alley. Uh, did you want to keep going? Just did you want to just travel or just get out of the alley? Um, 
I'll probably just try to like loop my way back around to the to the party. Okay. Without going through that alley. Alright. Um Slide me a casual stealth check. <laughs> I rolled a two, so it's a twelve. <laughs> uh, you are able to do this easily enough. Um, you just maneuver around through a couple of the buildings and uh, slip through another alley, and you are able to return back to the lobby of the Thank Badger. Uh, you feel like you're in the clear. Uh, you're in the lobby of Think Badger. There's the the bartender there. Um, looks like a uh, like a bespectacled furbolg. Um, and uh, you know where your party is. If that's your intention, but you can do whatever you want. You are a free bird. Um. Would I know, like, where the hideout is? Yeah. It's, it's your hideout, of course. Yeah. Before going back... Before going to sleep for the night, Twig will probably try to head over in that direction. Okay. To see what Madash is talking about. Alright. Um, so, Twig, by... Uh, by your lonesome. Head, you enter the Think Badger, look around. The bartender, the verbal bartender gives you a nod, you nod back, and then turn around. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that what happens? Basically, okay. just popping in. Uh, and then you boop, 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 hop down the stoop, and you head back towards Hideout. Mega Gang. Whoa. That's not what's going on. Mega <laughs> now? Um, it will take you probably about, let's see, in this part of the city. Are you... What is your, um... What is your gate? Um... How, how quick not, are you trying to be? Not, like, sprinting, but... Probably just like jogging. Okay. I'm jogging. I'm out just for a, steady, a late night jog. A late night jog. Okay, roll me a 1d20 plus uh, 15. Let me get 26. It takes you that many minutes to get to the high. Uh, okay. And before you travel, you would know that. Uh, but you can head off now if you like. Like it, it would take that much time. Yep. You're, this is where you grew up. You, this is your city, basically. Um, uh -huh. You kind of know its ins and outs and how quickly moving yourself will get you to a particular spot. Alright, that sounds good. Okay. It'll take off at that pace. Alright. Let's see. Um, I believe it was Pastiche, Michaela, Schumann, Zelia. Yeah, Zelia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think. And then Zoas so for peaks. Yes, but I believe Zoas was heading towards uh, the exploding chickens. There's exploding chickens. There, that's what Oricon said. There was an explosion in that direction, and there were chickens seen. Uh, I am completely blanking. I don't have that in my notes. <laughs> that never happened then. <laughs> no, 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 no. What, what, what happened? I remember the explosions. I don't remember any chickens. I, I could have sworn the there was chicken stuff. There was chicken stuff. Maybe I'm hallucinating, but Zoas? there was definitely explosions over there. Zoas talked said that there were explosions. Yeah, Korokon said there were explosions in 
this direction from here. Like, Korokon was sitting there, the explosions were over here, and Zoe was headed in that direction, and then we cut away to Twig. Like, we oh. cut outside. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Alright, that definitely happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Zoaz is walking in that direction. We'll come back to you in a moment. Um, in the room. Uh, Pastiche, Chuman, and Michaela. <laughs> you see Zalia pacing for a moment. She appears lost in thought before finally just making some kind of stretch slash hissing noise and then face plants on the bed. Just <laughs> just sprawled out. Good night, Celia. Hello? Pastiche was... Uh-huh. Pastiche was, like, uh, copying spells, right? Yep. Okay. Um... I guess. Um... Yeah. Yeah, no one else was, like, really doing that. Uh, you can see Pastiche just furious at work. Uh... Trying to transcribe and uh, practice a spell. Just they look like they're kind of just racing against the clock uh, as they're trying to uh, understand and perform and uh, rewrite the spell before the magic of uh, the scroll that is embedded in is expended. There's some small puffs of fire here and there. I would see that. What was I say? Uh, would ask. What is the. Ah, uh, what's this? Uh, yes. Is there anything. that. Uh, Is there any way for me to help with any of that? Mm. I don't believe so. You could let me focus. Fair enough. Um, would leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> and, uh... Their sentence is punctuated oh. by a, just like a little quick, <laughs> of, just just like a, a quick little burst of fire from their mouth. <laughs> just bleh. But that's it. Hey, right, I mean, um, was Chimin just sitting? Chimin is. Right out cold. Oh, okay. Uh, These youngsters, Michaela. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, I don't know. Michaela would then just try and... occupy herself until she feel tired enough to sleep, I suppose. Okay. Touching your toes and patting your head and rubbing your belly. Mm, I don't know. Just um, just think. 
back with, on the various kangaroo brats and try and, I don't know, think of a way to send a message back. But ultimately, not caught with anything. And yeah, that's it. Joke. along a lovely street <laughs> in oh yeah in Luxmox. okay you can hear the general kind of overall murmur of a city at night uh Luxmox, as you're very well aware is a city that never truly sleeps um, True. there's still people running around doing things um, there's still some shops that are available and open, but not everything. It's mainly just the, the nighttime ride where you just need a quick bite or uh, just a random juice bar or something. Um, you can hear you're walking next to <coughs> the. Uh, you're walking next to one of the main canals. Where uh, good bird just ferrying around, you can hear the water laughing. Um, you can hear some. Uh, you can hear some muttering up ahead, and you see a pair of dune striders looking out into the canal. Um, They've got their hands on their brows, just kind of searching. Like, obvious, like, we're looking for something motion. <laughs> Big ol' uh, double-bladed scimitar at the ready. Um, you're just continually uh, walking in the direction that Korakon pointed. Um, you head... You, you pass the Dune Striders, and they just, like, you can hear them uh, muttering uh, with just your passive perception about uh, how there seems to be uh, some sort of weird animal that got into the water um, that's causing huge splashes and appeared skeletal, so they've been, they've doubled the watch on, on the ferry, and they're just complaining about it. Why do we have to stand here, all right? nothing in here. Probably someone's kid fell in. It was a badger. Uh, and then continuing your brisk walk. Um, you let's see. What is your what's your passive perception? Uh, 13. Okay. <clears throat> I will say you catch... Uh, you catch a glimpse of a certain Kenku that you've been guiding across the continent. Um, as they are out for a lovely brisk jog at night. Oh. Well, I think Zoas would call out... A twig! Twig! And Twig will stop and turn around at the call and say, Oh, Zoaz, good to see you this late at night. What are you doing? Uh, well, I was told there was an explosion. And I figured, well, I am one to get myself into trouble. Why not go check it out? I see. Okay. Any idea what it could have been? None. 
So supposedly Korokon heard it. Well, I wish I could come with you, but I need to visit some friends, so I'll just I... be heading on my way. I see. Oh, uh, I'm not one to pry. I hope you have a good meeting. Twig nods. And then he'll... Hmm. One sec, let me just, let me just check something. You see Twig check their nuts. He's like rummaging through his backpack. <laughs> I forget who I gave my horn to. Make a history check. Because you realize that this that this thing that you've been carrying for quite some time is no <laughs> longer in your pack. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> oh well. I'm sure it'll turn up sometime. Never mind. Just make sure to stay safe, so I was... Uh Twig will wave and then head off his own way. I suppose, I suppose Zoaz, uh, not having found anything, will just sort of keep aimlessly walking, but if he doesn't find anything, you know, relatively soon, he'd probably just head over to the Temple of Selene and uh, go to his room and go to sleep. Okay. Uh, make a perception check, investigation check, or a survival check. Uh, depending on what you choose, you will get a thing. Survive. It's time to survive. <laughs> it's time to survive. So, Zoas. Uh, Korokon didn't give you much direction, just a point and insane explosions. Um, so, your Uh, your efforts to determine what's going on, um, or what Korokon found, or maybe just making stuff up to get you to go somewhere else. <laughs> You're not quite sure. All these thoughts kind of mull over in your head, and uh, you do end up uh, in uh, in the Knox area of the city, um, you head over a bridge into a just different part. Um, Knox uh, is very similar, except it's uh, it has what appears to be some kind of filter over everything that you see. It just makes everything just look a little bit darker, like a little a little shaded, like a little a little tinted. Um, you are uh, heading in this direction, just making sure that uh, you're continuously traveling in this in this ray that Korokon pointed, uh, trusting in the Aldani, um, and your shepherding skills allow you to perform this uh, because you're pretty good at traveling in direction. <laughs> I'm pretty good at traveling in a direction. <laughs> uh, you're, you are you are keenly adept at this, um, yeah. and you do eventually. It takes you some time, um, but you you do eventually, after meeting Twig, um, come upon a curious site. This site is um, a Dune Strider. Um, and they've got their double-bladed scimitars kind of strapped across their back. They're pushing a um, they're pushing a wooden um, wooden cart, kind of like a wheelbarrow. And they're pushing. It looks like there is um, a bunch of um, 
cloth or linens or other textiles uh, kind of bundled up in this wheelbarrow. Um, they're just... they... you just happen upon them like they come around uh, a corner and then you can see them. Um, this is... you're just still continuing in the direction. Um, but this is mm -hmm. something new. I'm not quite sure if this is uh, anything towards that. And you kind of feel a little, uh, a little empty-handed, but uh, this is what Selene has given you. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Uh, I think... Zoas would probably just head back to the temple. I mean, it's just a dune strider. He's doing his own thing. Trusting the dune striders. Um, not bothering to query. They're doing their job. Everyone has a job around here, and your job is to get some sleep. It's true. Um, so you head back to the old temple of Selene. Um, doors open for you. you open it up. You see the Loxodon still uh, kind of like <laughs> panicky uh, nervously, just trying to uh, focus on uh, these kind of uh, quartz crystal vials. Uh, just in, you're familiar with the ritual, uh, you could even do it yourself if you so chose. Uh, mm -hmm. Just see them focused on just making more holy water. They're there and just at the first counter. Oh. I think Zoas would ask to be pointed to his room. Oh, yes, uh, over here. Uh, they guide you over to your room, open the door. It is a fresh, clean smelling room. Uh, the bed is made, everything is straight in here. Um, there is a bureau, there's a lovely mirror um, over it, plenty of drawers. Uh, a couple chairs, a couple table. Um, out on top of the of the uh, of a like a little kind of office desk sort of thing is a uh, tray with a quaint little mug and um, some coffee beans and some water. A little note says uh, for your morning. <laughs> Tis as well. I think Zoaz will smile, say, ah, oh, it is good to be home, and then settle down for the night. Commence the honk shoe. Honk shoe, honk shoe. Alright, we've got some honk shoe to, to get over, to get up to over here. Me, 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 me. Okay. Alright, Twig. Your Rubido hideout uh, has many fronts uh, from where you guys attempt to remain incognito. Uh, and you know the easiest way to get into uh, to, to get into it. Um, but you also know that there are um, many uh, Let's not beat around the bush. Traps <laughs> uh, in uh, in Rubido to keep out unwanted visitors. Um, what direction is the easiest way to get into Rubido? You know, uh, it is merely you choosing your starting point. Like the the easiest way to avoid traps, or the most obvious way. Uh, the uh, easiest way to avoid traps, or or the, or the quickest way to get in, um, or the most roundabout way, you have your choice. Uh -huh. um, basically, you can just enter in via northwest, east, south, or whatever. Uh, from the south. From the south. All right. <laughs> Positioning you and friends. Did I 
up this wall? I did get up this wall. Okay, cool. Oops. What if I have extra vision for that wall? Um. I, d I note it. <laughs> Alright, gang. <laughs> I'm maneuvering everyone else over here. So that you can... not look at just like a blank screen. You can, you can move your token and just like follow along behind Twig. Uh, well just like heckling from behind. <laughs> no. Alright. Uh, Ruby Dale. So Twig. Uh, you arrive at your hideout by your lonesome. Uh, kind of a little um, a little uh not, not really, never mind, let me start over. Uh, you arrive at uh, the high now, uh, catching your breath, and you arrive at the south, uh, the south end. Um, this end is where um, you, uh, your team has uh, something of a blacksmith front <laughs> uh, on the east, on the like southeast side of the building where people come in and um, exchange weapons and like ask for modifications to them. Uh, and you know on the southwest front, uh, Jessica had a, um, there, you guys keep a, like a botanical garden. Um, and then here you stand in front of a little, uh, in front of a door. Um, you slide past a little alcove. It's easy to miss, and it's like, um, like it's almost imperceptible to the casual gaze. Um, and then you come in, slide in, and then you are in front of a door where it used to hold the... when you left anyway. It used to hold the, um, the dormitory, the beds for everyone that was part of, of this hideout. Um, when you arrive here, the music changes. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, <clears throat> You are here at this door. Um, you know that there are plenty of clever traps and plenty of um, just devious things around. Um, you know there are plenty of um, tricks and um, secret entrances and exits. Um, you've been away for quite a while and you've You've had quite the adventure, so your memory is a little fuzzy on them. Um, you currently only know that they exist. <laughs> um, but uh, you are here at this door to the dormitory. Um, sometimes you, sometimes you, <laughs> uh, Ribido, like rented it out as a way to make some extra coin. Um, but you are in front of this wooden door. It has a... Uh, it has two bands of like iron reinforcements. Um, the door over, sorry, not the door. The building overall um, is a little more incognito. You took you took down the painted cloths um, and banners that are on most other uh, buildings to give it a little color, and this one is a little more bland. Um, the whole thing is this tan color. Uh, made out of uh, sandstone. You take a deep breath, and what do you do? Um. Well, I suppose we would try the door okay. and see if see if it's open. The door is locked. Figures. Okay. Twig will try to lock it, the door. Okay. Do a quick check to make sure no one's watching. Okay, uh, you check left, check right, slide me a perception check, and then a thieves tools. Coast seems clear. Cool. Alright, 
it takes you maybe about five minutes. It's it's interesting. It, it, this is not the not quite the luck that you're familiar with. You 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 swear to yourself, um, and then like you hear someone walking, just steps on the cobble, just hard boots. You have to duck behind, um, like the little uh, kind of little uh, cranny uh, here. Wait for it to pass. Shoutouts to your perception check. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and uh, you're, able, you're able to uh, come back and finish the job and... You open the door. And you see... Uh, a receptionist area. There's like a wooden desk. Uh, sorry, a, a wooden L desk. Um, there's a chair behind it. And uh, ahead you can see just beds. Um, unmade linens thrown everywhere, unkempt. Nobody cleaned this place. Uh, there's some tables, there are some uh, mugs on top of saucers um, littering the place. Um, you've got your wooden floor uh, just above the sand, and there's the uh, blue carpet ahead of you. You know that there is a um, there are a couple of rooms. Uh, Twig will just like sort of call inside the door. Zom? Jess? Is anyone home? There's no response after a while. Right. And I'll just uh, check the ground. And like right above the door, and see if there's anything, like any obvious traps or okay. things to look out for. Make an investigation check. Yeah, absolutely. The trap you know is there. Is there? <laughs> and <laughs> uh, you you look up, uh, see that it is yet untriggered, and then you just kind of nod to yourself, and you take the swinging paint can off of <laughs> the uh, off of off of the uh, shelf that it's that it's on that would trigger when you stepped on the first wooden plank and you just set it down the classic okay with that twig will step inside okay and close the door behind him locking out the riffraff behind you <laughs> You softly close the door. You are alone. So far, as you think. Um, the state of the room, how it's like all unorganized and stuff. Is that like, would that be typical, or is it like something unusual? Um, what's your passive history? Passive history is. 12. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Uh, this is atypical. Um, oh, okay. You guys usually kept some order to it, but this is just disarray. You look, Twig to, your is gonna... you, you look to your left and you, you even see just two pillows on top of a, like a, a little four box shoe holder uh -huh. uh, and why are these there <laughs> the, the whole thing is just out of whack Twig's gonna try to go to where uh, the place like the hiding spot that Madash mentioned earlier okay if that's something he remembers uh, you do remember that uh, the uh, in the very descriptive it's in that place where I put that thing that time is uh -huh. in uh, is a is a funny story uh, it is in the middle uh, of of Rebido 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 <laughs> uh -huh. um, you've got several more rooms to traverse yet. Okay. 
Alright. So he's gonna step forward up to the rogue. Okay. There you are. At the precipice of the rug. I'll just poke it a few times with the scimitar, see if it's there's a hole underneath it or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, the hole that you know is there, is there, <laughs> and then it kind of just spills down into the hole, and there's just like a little five foot by five foot uh, little drop. We really gotta get that fixed. Twig will hop over it okay. to the other side. All right, make a uh, dexterity saving throw. <laughs> no problem. As soon as you jump over the hole, you instantly remember that there is a second hole for this <laughs> specific purpose. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And you tell me how you avoid this, because you rolled a 23. <laughs> like, as soon as his feet leave the floor, Twig, like, remembers, and he sort of, like, sticks out his arms and legs to the walls at the side to, like, to, like, hang on them before he hits the ground. <laughs> Alright. And then he's gonna try to, like, hop from there to the third, the third spot there. <laughs> You land on the third spot poof, with a soft pop on the carpet. Where there, where there is no third hole. Where there, where there is no third hole. You look to your right, and you see a picture of Manash just holding his chin with a grin. Mm -hmm. uh, Took. We'll take a peek into the room, see if there's anyone. Anyone inside? Okay. Um, make a perception check. A fifteen. <clears throat> All right. You take a peek. There are three beds, all not made. They look awful. Um. There's several coffee mugs. Um, everyone, big coffee drinkers here in this in this group, um, because he's living core there. And uh, you don't see anybody, um, but on the table where there is only one coffee mug, kind of like bunched up under the lip of the of a saucer holding a coffee mug <clears throat> is um like looks like a couple of coins Twig will leave those yeah. Twig will leave those be okay and he'll check the the room right above him as well okay also a perception check please Another 15. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so boop, boop. you peek in. Uh, four beds. There is a um, not much difference than the previous room. Uh, you there is a book on top of one of the beds. Um, that's it. Um. All right, then he'll finally take a look at the south room. Okay. You take a peek at the at the last one, <clears throat> or you maneuver around. Uh, check left. There's the um uh what you call it? What's the word? Plant. There's the potted plant <laughs> uh, that you guys uh, take care of and water every once in a while, and then you check in the room. One last perception check, please. Dang, a 23. Um, you peek in. Uh, more beds, more 
stuff laying everywhere. This time there's even clothes on the floor. Nobody picked up. Um, but a little concerning. Um, it everything does seem, you know, completely just disarray and erratic. That's not mm -hmm. how you guys keep it. Um, but suddenly you notice a quick uh, surge of motion. Um, and your eye locks onto it, and you see something scurry under one of the beds. Twig will investigate. Okay. Get down on your uh, get down on your talons. Look under the bed. By golly, it's a rat. Oh my goodness! It squeaks at you menacingly. <laughs> squeak, squeak. Twig's gonna mimic the squeak back. <laughs> squeak, squeak. <laughs> it takes like two st two steps back. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Twig, Twig will just like wave it off and. Okay. It goes and like hides in the corner. <laughs> He's gonna check out the potted plant. Okay, it's a plant. See if it's if it's been watered recently. Oh, that's an investigation check. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure. Uh, like the the topsoil looks kind of dry, but the plant looks healthy. I'll, um, I'll pour a, a little bit from the water skin just to be safe. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you, this, this plant appears to just guzzle this water. Oh my goodness. Um, not noticing anything else. Twig's probably going to head back to the front desk and see if there's anything, uh, like anything noteworthy. Okay. That might have... Check, please. Yep. Uh, what are you kind of peeking around at? I'd like to see if there's any papers or if the. Maybe check out the chest behind the counter. Okay. Yeah, investigation. Oh, a 19. Okay. There is uh, a lovely quill and ink. Uh, ink, ink, uh, ink, ink vial. Um, there, there is a piece of paper. He managed to read it really quick. Uh, it's basically just like a ledger of, uh, um, if any rooms were rented. Um, looks like one was rented. Uh, and there is a uh, payment of twenty six gold, which seems high. Um, you check out the chest, pop it open, it's not locked. Um, just choomp, there's 26 gold in here. Oh. Uh, also, uh, as you expected, there is a stiletto dagger with just like a broad, kind of flat, almost shuffle-like blade. Um, you guys keep it here in case anybody gets rowdy. Um, So we'll take the dagger, but leave it the gold. Okay. You can add another dagger to your inventory. Mark it as stiletto, because it's new and different. Nice. Um, would Twig like remember how to get uh, further into the into the base? You would. You know, there is a uh, there is a special door um, that. Uh, heads deeper in. Uh, you're only able to remember that there is one, not quite how, <laughs> uh, uh, how or where it is. All right. Twig will head back into the rat room. Okay. And as he enters, he'll just give a wave and a squeak. 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 
He'll check to see if there's like anything unusual about the like the walls on this set. Okay. Yeah, you uh, give me an investigation check. As you I almost know. picked intimidation. <laughs> give me an intimidation check. Open as up you, now. As you give that rat a steely eye. Uh, yeah, you drag your claws on, uh, on the on the wall here. Um, in inside, it's transitioned from stand, from sandstone to more cooler. Uh, gray like stone blocks and slabs <clears throat> you're dragging your talons you're like it's around here somewhere before uh, one claw kind of catches in between a couple bricks uh, there it is and then you uh, f flick and you uh, hit a latch and then Ah. A piece of the wall next to a bed, uh, next to like the, the kind of headboard of a bed. Um, so like the furniture is partially blocking it. Um, kind of slides backwards and then uh, rotates, opens. So we'll hop on the bed and peek inside. Okay, perception check. <laughs> perception. There's lots of checks. Oh, you're in. You're in Check Town. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's true. Uh, Sixteen is pretty good. Okay, so in here <clears throat> is uh, an area where. Um, Zom, when he wasn't in his study, on the opposite side of the um, of the complex of the compound, uh, he would peek in here. It's also where he um, kind of put some books that were out of uh, where he wanted to kind of keep them out of sight um, because anybody could just waltz into his study because uh, he taught kids in the uh, in the mornings. Um, you can see many crates. There's a couple bookshelves, just plain, uh, no frills, um, filled with books. There is a um, kind of like a uh, kettle on top of one of the bookshelves to your right. Uh, and you, with 16, you do notice another uh, another bit of movement behind the uh, behind the crates. Or behind a, a bunch of crates, rather. Twig will slowly creep forward to check out the movement. Okay. Uh, you slow. Make a stealth check. Uh, what'd we get? 22. 22 is pretty good. You slowly creep forward, taking care to ensure that your talons do not like click or clack on the stone floor so I had to install stone uh, stone floor here because every once in a while he would uh, forget himself and just start casting spells in here and practicing mm. and that doesn't work uh, when the floor is wooden <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you creep in and you peek around a stack of crates and you see a skeleton. Oh my goodness. The skeleton is small. It's four-legged. It is a cat. It is the skeleton of a cat. And it is moving, Twig. It, uh, you rolled a 23, so 23 is good. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, 22. So it, it has not responded to your presence yet. Mm -hmm. um, but that may not be true for very long. <laughs> Twig will not start. Will not try to stay hidden. He, he will offer the cat a ration. <laughs> okay. It's just a bit of like dried bread. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Mm. 
the cat skeleton. <laughs> Uh, upon making yourself known, and you stretching out a, uh, a, a bit of just, like, hard tack, um, it looks at you for a moment. Like, there, there's a brief, like, solid four seconds where nothing happens and it's just staring at you. And then, like, this horrible, like, shriek... <laughs> it comes out and it jumps on top of a crate and it goes to leap at you. Go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> That's not good. Oh my god. A little weird. A little weird. Oh no, look out! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this cat skeleton uh, shrieks comes at you and leaps off, uh, leaps on top of a crate and then leaps off the crate at you, swiping its bony claws at you, Twig. Oh my goodness. Uh, ten. Uh, that does not hit. Cat only has one, uh, cat skeletons only have one attack. Here we go. It, uh, swipes at you, you dodge deftly out of the, uh, deftly, um, to the side, and it, uh, lands on a crate behind you. It kind of like rears up, does the cat eye become a semicircle thing where it it puffs up, its tails, its tail bones are straight up in the sky. It's coming at you. Um, twig will just say like bad down, like take a swing with the scimitar. Okay. <laughs> A 26, cool. you know, you know, just barely hits. It was oh. on the cusp. But, uh, awesome. meet, I mean, you, it meets the AC, beats the AC, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, tell me how you obliterate this cat skeleton. <laughs> it just, like, whaps it with the flat of the blade. Okay. Like, knocks it away. <laughs> Alright, just... You just Wad it, and then like, like you're swinging a weapon enough to deal damage to it. Uh, so like the the skull of this cat skeleton kind of cracks a bit on the forehead, and just oh, no. falls down, falls off the crate, and just splatters into a million bones. And we return. <laughs> that was a little weird. Indeed, as you can recall, you don't have, uh, you guys didn't keep cat skeletons. Mm. Uh, in this room, you know there is a uh, uh, there's another way uh, to get past. Zom certainly did not go through the the dormitory every time he needed to get work done. Uh, so you know there's. Uh, further hidden passages to get into the rest of Rubidon. So we'll check out like these markings on the ground and on the on the wall as well. Okay. Investigation check please. Okay, click. Uh, a fifteen? Let's see here. Okay, <clears throat> 15. Uh, you look where the cat skeleton was, um, and you can see that there is a round um, kind of like indentation or um, um, kind of like... No, indentation is the correct word. There's kind of like a round, a round indentation that um, forms a half circle the against this wall here um, the indentation looks like it's very flush against the wall um, the ground itself looks like um, it's seen a lot of kind of tread 
It's it's slightly dirtier than than the rest of the room or the rest of the floor in this kind of like little zom storage place. Could I like push against the wall and see if it uh see if that's like a revolving wall deal? Yeah, you can. Um, so you push against the wall. Um, there's some give, but there's also some resistance. Uh, indeed, uh, you have found the uh, the the place to get to the next room. The, you found the secret entrance, but 15 wasn't enough to just give it to you. <laughs> I see. Um, but there's something on the other side. It is a rotating wall, um, but you can't remember uh, if uh, what what could be blocking it or or how it could work. Uh, you just remember that this is a sacred door, and like on the other side is is some stuff. Uh, and there's like a sort of yeah. So <laughs> like like you push on it, and like it's enough to say, oh yeah, this this swivels. But you're there's something there's some kind of resistance. And there's like an indentation on the on the wall. Uh, yes, as you push past it, kind of like it moves past the indentation. You can see. Could I see if there's anything on one of these shelves that uh that will like activate it or do something with the wall? Okay. Uh. Yeah. As you, uh, as you are moving through Rubido Hideout, and you're remembering things, you're slowly piecing this back together after having your memories dashed away from having just such an exciting adventure. Mm -hmm. Uh. Up to and including acquiring a legendary blade, <laughs> a legendary weapon, <laughs> nearly dying many times. Um, you move back to one of the bookshelves. Uh, you see, there's books everywhere, just about like all sorts of different topics. Uh, most of them arcane. Um, you start poking at the books, and then uh, you remember, aha. <laughs> You open the tea kettle uh -huh. and uh, push the button in there and close the tea kettle and then cool. you see more beds and you remember uh, you recall that this room is the one that uh, the squad sleeps in. So this is, in part, your sleeping quarters, uh, and everyone else's. So we'll head on in. Okay. <clears throat> so you kind of clamber through some crates, and... Here you are, uh, with beds aplenty. Um, you know which one's yours and which one everyone else is in uh, is as well. Uh, there's some desks here, uh, books. Uh, this one's a little bit cleaner. Left uh, your uh, your bed's kind of left the, the way you last left it. And uh, yeah, what would you like to do? Oh wait, uh, and you can see on the on the on the far northeast uh, that there is a regular door um, with a regular doorknob um, that ostensibly leads into a regular room. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. And this regular, the, the, you know, on the other side of that door. Uh, Make a history check, actually. Is something. I'm gonna use my inspiration on that history check. Okay. <laughs> a fourteen. Okay. The other, uh, you know, on the other side of that door is kind of like the core of Ruby Dome. Okay. Um, where all the planning went on, all the. Uh, 
all the dirty deeds, all the the cavorting, all that kind of stuff. It it's it's on it's just on the other side of that wall. Before moving on, Twig will just give a quick glance to the beds, see if anything's under the covers or under the pillows. Uh, that is an investigation check. Not bad. Um, you check out the beds. There is a. Let's see. Um, if there are any personal effects in your bed, you can retrieve them now um, that you would have intentionally left uh, back at the hideout. Um, no. <coughs> I think Twig, Twig keeps like a like a spare dagger under his pillow. Okay. This one's um. This would probably, uh, th this would be, um, the dagger that you got, um, from, uh, from your group as sort of like a, um, like a graduation, like a, hey, you did it, you passed all the, all the thief stuff. Um, this mm -hmm. would be your, your Jumbia, um, which is a kind of curved dagger, <clears throat> um, that goes into kind of like a plain sheath, and it's intended to um, for you to like decorate and like adorn with accessories and like stick things to it um, as you go through life. Um, and the the dagger is is curved in such where it kind of it almost doubles back on itself. It's it's one of those. <laughs> big broad blade but then it goes whoop, 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 curls around um, and so you pick that up get that get that back um, there is a book on Jorman's bed no sorry not a book there's a book on Zom's bed uh, on Jorman's bed um, there is a satchel it is an open satchel. It is. Uh, it has spilled its contents. Uh, its contents are well, what would appear to be gold coins. Uh, with such a high investigation check, actually, you can see that they are uh, not. Uh, like you take a peek at them, um, but like something immediately seems off to your keen eyes, Twig, uh, and you can see that they are. Uh, they are drawn. They are counterfeit. Mm -hmm. uh, Tug will also leave those be, but he'll he'll check out the book on Zom's bed. Okay. You pick up the book, and a um, a coin uh, drawn uh, drawn as well uh, falls, kind of like slips out of the pages um, onto the bed. Just and uh, this book is Zom's book. Um, it looks like a just kind of like a little leather-bound uh, thing. Um, it's got a leather kind of drawstring, um, but it's but it's designed to where you wrap it around the book, and then you kind of swirl it around a button to to lock it and close it and keep it closed. Mm -hmm. Uh, you identify this as uh, probably a zombie panel. Twig would take just a quick peek inside, maybe to the roughly where the where the coin was. Okay, if that's possible. Um, it would be kind of difficult to see like where the coin was um, mm -hmm. because you would have to. It would be kind of difficult, but you can try. You would, you would like open it up and that kind of thing. Maybe just like the most recent page, then. Okay. Um. Sure. So you open up. Like you, you undo like the little leather action around the button, 
and um, you open up the book and let me check my notes here real quick Um, make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh no. As you <laughs> you open the book and there is a flash. Oh my goodness! <laughs> a natural <laughs> Uh there is a quick flash of, of an orange glyph and it's like uh it kind of like uh like holograms up into the air with a circle with a kind of like a, a triangle. Uh, at the bottom and a uh, like a line through the top and then just boom <laughs> uh, you are assaulted with a massive blast of searing hot steamy air uh, and uh, you take uh, eight fire damage. Um, would evasion be able to save me from it? What's evasion do again? Uh, no, dodge all the... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, when you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make dexterity saving throw to take only. Are you serious? <laughs> 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 I have right. just the tool. It only works if you tell me how you how you get out of this. <laughs> As Twig like opens the book, he vaguely remembers he vaguely remembers something like this happening. And he just like throws it across the room. <laughs> away from him. It hit you you toss it across the room and then like it it hits like this mirage of of Chuman that you have in your head is <laughs> <laughs> what would Chuman think? Uh, and just poof, the the journal kind of like puffs and pops and and spews like this awful like high pressurized air going through a small hole just. Noise. After a few seconds, it dies down. <laughs> so we'll poke it a few times and then retrieve the journal. Okay, it, it's hot, it's steamy. You kind of hot potato it between your talons real quick, um, then just kind of like blow on it, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you turn it to. Like you start from the back and just flip, 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 flip. Um, you continue flipping. Until you reach the, the, the front again. Huh. Then it, all the, all the pages are empty. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll shrug and but keep the we'll keep the journal with him. Okay. And then continue on into the over to the door. Alright. You pocket what can only be Zom's journal. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and you make your way to the door. You creep. And uh You you get in front of the door, right? Yeah. Okay. You get in front of the door, and um, you you feel your body suddenly like descend as you put your weight on your on your right, oh, no. on your right talon. <laughs> a a wooden plank just depresses. And and. This happens. Um. Is there like a anything under the plank, or is uh, it just like 
break a board? No, this is this this appears to be some kind of uh, pressure uh, pressure plank, uh, and you have pushed it down. Uh, you're not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> It just like freezes, it looks like winces a little bit, and looks around. Okay. And if no if nothing happens, Make he'll a... give the he'll give. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Make a perception check as you look around. <laughs> Sixteen. Okay. You look around, kind of holding your breath a bit. Your 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 breath catching in your throat. As you just slowly look around, nothing appears to jump out at you. Um, nothing appears to happen. Uh, you're still standing on this pressure plank. Mm hmm. Twig's gonna take his octopus statue and use it to keep weighing down the plate as he steps off of it. Alright. <laughs> as as you cleverly remember, <laughs> you take your your weighty octopus statue of of the uh, godlike entity Dagon, <laughs> <laughs> who purifies the waters of Corsair. <laughs> and you uh, make a sleight of hand. We're gonna end, uh, you, um, as you attempt to Indiana Jones this. Yeah, that's that's the scene I'm imagining. <laughs> a nineteen. <laughs> All right, it's your story. Tell me. <laughs> Twig like sweating slightly. Like puts the statue down on the plate. At the same moment, he steps off of it, and then freezes, like, looks left, looks right, looks up, to see if anything happens. Okay. You look up, and you see the, uh, the kind of, like, crease where a trap door exists, and... You identify where what would have happened, it would have come from. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nothing happens. Um, you take your weight off of the uh, off of the plank, leaving only the octopus statue. Uh, it remains depressed. Like we'll breathe a sigh of relief and then uh, try to open the door. It's locked. <laughs> <laughs> this time. So we'll take a step back, and then send his mage hand to try and open the door with his thieves tools. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you are an arcane trickster, you can do that. <clears throat> uh, roll me some thieves tools. Thieves tools. Dang, can you roll low once? <laughs> I can't. It's in my nature. Well, I guess you did roll low. Cool. Alright, um, let's see. A 25. Yeah, you make short work of this thing. Um, if, it's, if it's not initiative, I can't roll low. <laughs> uh, so, using your mind and your eyeballs and kind of using your talons to kind of like men talk the mind taker this lock <laughs> you just circle and uh, your um, your thieves tools held aloft by an invisible force manage to unlock this uh, locked doorknob uh, pretty simply as you recall and is indeed why <laughs> the reason why you took a step back there is a quick puff of um kind of like super dark purple um kind of like glitter as 
the arcane weave briefly is called upon here. Just and then dissipates. Mm -hmm. right. Twig will push open the door with his mage hand okay. and then continue onward. Alright. So you open the door. <clears throat> okay. But in, uh, in here is kind of like the core of Rubydale. I said it again, of Rubydale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are, it, it's kind of like the, the, the planning room. You, there's, there's maps of Luxnox going everywhere. There's uh, thousands, not thousands, there's uh, tens of uh, letters and correspondence exchanged, um, all stacked on a, on a table. Um, there's ink quills, there's um, uh, stolen mail, there. <laughs> what might be the greatest crime you guys have committed. There's uh, a couple like satchels and uh, sacks on top of uh, the big table and you know random crates. There's folded clothes. Um, uh, other like kind of like little boxes, little suitcases, um, where you guys arrange uh, clothes and like makeup and stuff so you can quickly go into a disguise. So there's many disguise kits here. Um, there's food, um, lots of barrels, there's uh, loose unsheathed blades and knives. Um, kind of laying around. That's a safety hazard. Always was. Um, <laughs> <coughs> um, big green rug. And um, as you look around, uh, just taking in the sight, uh, the whole room is uh, mega dark. Uh, up up to now, you you've been maneuvering around through like candlelight um, that has been mysteriously lit. Or, or left lit. Like, all the candles were super burned down, but this room is very dark. Um, the... <clears throat> um, so it's, it's dim light, is what I'm trying to say. Um, mm -hmm. The... As you look around, um, things do look kind of out of order. You can see there's the bulletin board on the on the far, far side, uh, but you're not able to quite see what's on it at this point um, because you're so far away. Um, but go ahead and give me a perception check with disadvantage. Okay. Um, you look in here and <clears throat> you can see all the things that I described. Um, But uh, something feels a little off, and you look around and you can see um, in the in one of the stools <clears throat> you can see a form uh, kind of like sitting kind of like half cocked away from you. Uh, it is. It looks humanoid. Looks um, approximately human-sized. Um, they're in the dim light. Your. They don't appear to have acknowledged your presence or anything right now. Uh, but the room is, like I said, very dark. Uh, before stepping in, Twig will use a drop of starlight. Okay. His eyes. You, uh, <clears throat> uh, sensing something amiss, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you pull out your jar and uh, untwist the lid and take a little eyedropper and just bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, your eyes become aglow with the stars of the night sky protected by Salome, shining and glittering in your irises, and you're able to see. Uh, in this room a little bit. Uh, go ahead and make me another perception check. Normal. That's much better. <laughs> That's better, yeah. 
um, you can see that the um, the food that is laid out has now with your you know exceptional site you can see that the food is that like all the food that's laid out is kind of like moldered um, mm. you can see instead of um, instead of where fruit was out on out on plates is just piles of dust um, the bread's moldy the but everything like if it can mold it's mold if it cannot mold it's dust um, you can see uh, some other eerie things as your eyes clasp on the form that is sitting in the stool and it is a uh, naked humanoid um, kind of like callow looking skin um, oh, sorry, sallow. <laughs> Callow is a different word. Mm -hmm. um, sallow looking skin. Um, they're just quietly sitting there. Their heads kind of like half cocked. then you're able to see the rest of the room. There's plenty of maps, plenty of uh, uh, literature. Um, and uh, you know where... Uh, Matt, I just put that thing that time. Uh, you also know where that is. Um, you can see like knives uh, stuck in the table because that's what you did with knives. Mm -hmm. um, you can see like a couple things uh, like slammed into the bulletin board on the top right, or sorry, on the top, uh, the the northern section of the room. Um, there's some, yeah, there's some stuff going on in this room. Twig will. No, sorry. Oh. There's the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to draw its attention, Twig will just step inside the room and try to uh, see where uh, where Madash left that thing. Okay. And see if it's near the the weirdo. Okay. Um... It is. Uh... It, it was the funniest place Manash could. Uh, thing to put it. It's underneath one of the table legs <laughs> of the big table in the center. I see. And you recall he was playing a joke on Jormund. Romeo, yeah, stealth check. Stealth. Yep, as you enter the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> as you enter the room and you kind of like peel yourself to the side, <laughs> as it doesn't move, you can see. You can see his chest kind of rising and falling heavily. Sorry, not not heavily. Um, quickly, like it's kind of doing, <laughs> kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Not sure if that picked it up, but if it did, great. Um, you can see that. Yeah, um, but they appear to not have responded to your presence. Huh? Um, since we're since it's pretty weird now, let's let's go ahead and the music changes. The, the, the tune weird. in your head and the song in your heart changes as you are uh, as you are in this situation. 
things are a little weird. Um, does it seem like the the table I get hidden under is it close to the the thing? Uh, the table that uh, Madash put that thing that time <laughs> uh, uh -huh. is the middle table, and it is the table that uh, uh, this, okay. this humanoid is sitting on. Um, <laughs> roll, roll a history check as you as you look at this table and you're kind of weighing your options. Uh -huh. um, you notice that there's many. You don't remember which table leg it is. Okay. Um, but as you're looking over this table, you can see that there is a large part, uh, parchment. There's many um, satchels, um, uh, many plates, many knives, many um, kind of like food paraphernalia. There's a book. There's um, several gold coins um, all along, just all over the table. Um, and you can see there is a um, an assortment of like kind of like little quartz, or not really quartz, um, see-through, transparent, transparent glass looking like uh, vials. They look vaguely diamond shaped. Um, those are all bunched up, um, kind of in the middle of the table next to a satchel that's spilling out gold coins. Mm -hmm. um, and then there you have uh, this humanoid just kind of hyperventilating. I don't, I don't recognize the humanoid, do it. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I didn't think so. I just. That's Twig steps into this room. We smash cut to. Like, like we, we do like a camera, like a security camera fo like footage, just like smash cut to each other party member. They're all just sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Nor, Funk Shu. The best observation. Zalia has turned into like a noodle, like a puddle of noodles in the corner. <laughs> Um, actually, wait, what time is it? No, Zalia is awake, actually. Um, mm. But nobody knows this, because everyone's asleep. And Twig is here. What <laughs> <laughs> um, say you, Twig? <laughs> Twig's probably going to realize that conflict is inevitable. And he's just gonna take a step back into the last room and cast some spells. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna like chant some incantations to himself, and some purplish, three purplish daggers will like rise in the air above his shoulders and head. And just float above him. <laughs> Okay. And also, pretty cool. A fourth one will form in his hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. And then he'll peek back in and see if it's still hyperventilating in the chair. Okay. Twig has suddenly become a really cool bird. <laughs> <laughs> There are swords everywhere. Okay. Uh, as you become the blade master, um, as you kind of think back to what Zom was trying to teach you and uh, what you have uh, applied yourself towards and come up with uh, being around your, your new party mates, um, you are able to perform these magical spells, these daggers apparate around you, kind of like slowly, uh, slowly spin uh, in midair next to your shoulders and head, um, and then you just reach into the arcane weave, and from a 
puff of smoke, you pull out just this slender, uh, kind of needle-like implement made out of just pure gloom of the shadow fell. <laughs> uh, kind of flip it to yourself, steal yourself, and then you peek back inside. You hear a as the humanoid head still cocked slowly turns its upper torso to you and you can see it get up but it doesn't get up with its motor functions of like using its legs what happens, Twig, is you hear this snap, like, uh, like break a leg snap, like bone snap, oh. and just <laughs> these two extremely large palps of pointed bone and flesh explode from its back dig into the wood, and it pushes itself up using that. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's looking at you, with its head kind of tilted to the side. This You can see it now, this vacant look, jaw just kind of held agape. No pupils. Just looks at you. Another set of shoulder blade bone palps <laughs> spiders out of it and you just you can hear like this faint kind of little wail like uh... does it make any sort of like move towards me uh... <laughs> <sighs> it rushes towards you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and roll me some initiative. <laughs> it's initiative time. Uh, as, it's, as it's shrieking and wailing fills this room. I think I'm still locked into the initiative from last combat. Uh, I will remove combat and go ahead. You beat its initiative yep. by one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, you didn't. What the heck? What was that looking at? Yeah. See, he only rolls low when he's in initiative. Alright, you did manage to beat... It's high enough. Yeah, you did manage to beat his initiative. Uh, it is... Um... Eerily fast. Even though you beat his initiative, it is already heading, like, darting towards you. Oh. What I would you like this. to do, Twig? Uh, Twig holding his... his gloom blade. He's gonna take aim and just throw it right at the monster. <laughs> okay. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have an attack for this, so I'm just gonna use my. I think my scimitar should be the same attack yeah, roll. It is the same attack roll. Yeah. Okay. But it just does 2d8 flat. Uh, is it a weapon attack? Counts as a simple melee weapon. It does 2d8 plus your dex if you hit. Uh, a 26 hits. <laughs> it's a 26 hit? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. You keep rolling 19s on your attack roll. Yeah, 26 hits. Those dice weighted. Okay. Only, only on attack rolls. Oh, okay. That's fine. Ouch! What kind of damage is this? Psychic damage. Where is this week's spot again? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a lot of psychic damage. What we got? What's the total? Twenty nine. Yes. Okay. Ouchie! Why did you do that? <laughs> it was coming at me. It's. It's coming to greet you. What do you mean? All right, you want to move or stay there? I have to stay here. 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm, st I'm steady aiming. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, Twig, as you throw this uh, little needle of solidified gloom just <laughs> beds itself <laughs> and just wailing. Um, like, this creature, like, looks panicked. Like, looks like it's all wild-eyed and just, <sighs> just shrieking uh, incomprehensibly as it uh, runs towards you. Pom, pom, pom. <laughs> and is going to... Uh, let's see here. It is going to run up and grab around you. It is going to attempt to give you the biggest welcome back hug you oh, no. have ever <laughs> received. Uh, does a 22 hit? It does. Alright. Uh, you take... Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> You suffer Two damage? Three damage? 28 Ooh. piercing damage. Ooh. And you are grappled. And frightened. No, he's not. Oh, but wait, I no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you are grappled. As this thing is, like, rushing towards you, it wraps its arm, its pale, kind of like sallow, gross, clammy skin around you, like things completely naked too, grabs you, mm -hmm. and then you feel sharp, sudden pains all over your body, just as many, many spikes just pierce your, your bird flesh and feathers, and just, it's the entire time, it's shrieking and just wailing in your face, just... <laughs> This is going crazy. Uh, it's it looks extremely panicked. It's terrified. Uh, like it's the kind of like <laughs> it's the kind of terror that is contagious. It's um, a bit terrifying. That's his turn. Um. Grapple doesn't give disadvantage on attacks, right? No. But I can't run away. Uh, your your speed is zero until you break the grapple. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It's do or die. <laughs> so he's gonna take aim again. Oh, and Lord. as he raises his like. Oh wait wait, his, wait, like... wait 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 wait! Hang on. Let's not kill Twig. Uh, your spiral daggers. I, yes, I, I remember that right after it hit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so I, sudden I that, you, that you couldn't control them with your mind. I won't forget next time. <laughs> um, as Twig raises the dagger, it's like surrounded with thundering energy. And he tries to plunge it into the monster. Be... Uh, yeah, 2d8 plus 4 psychic, and then 1d8. 1d8 thunder. Should I do the thunder separately? No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, hey, 29 again. <laughs> 29 again, yeah. into this thing, Twig, just slicing it. Uh, it is kind of, at, at each of your cuts and stabs, it kind of bursts with this kind of 
uh, miasma looking stuff. Just, it just explodes out of the body as if it was under some kind of uh, high pressure release and just. My goodness. The, the entire time, like 100% of the time, it is shrieking at you directly in your face because it's holding on. <laughs> um, but like, there, there's always a question mark at the end of these. <laughs> like, it's a question mark at the end of the shriek. Uh, if you're fucking, if you're, if, if you're, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh huh. Um, okay. Anything else you got? Uh, no, bonus that's it for me. Action, bonus action. All right. Um, when, when you strike into the creature that is holding you, it kind of wriggles in response to the damage, and uh, you take five additional piercing damage. Um, it is going to use the giant spikes on the back of its, or on its back, and just stab into you with his giant uh, shoulder blades. It'll try. 15. Okay, that... The daggers fail to intercept it, but Twig doesn't. Okay. It's <laughs> wriggling in its grasp. You you see it kind of goop, like move up, brrr, just bend up, and then come down. Um, but for some reason. Then another one. Stab! But it... <laughs> It, uh, it goes and stabs in your body. You feel it pierce the leather, but there's a certain teethling looking out for you. The little keepsake mm -hmm. <laughs> that she that she wrapped around you when you uh, as a welcome gift. It pierces and stops on that. Uh, and then it starts like taking you and like spinning you around. As it starts spinning around in the, in the room, my goodness! You are just being hurled and and moved and maneuvered everywhere as this thing is spinning, shrieking. <laughs> it's it's heavy breath rising and falling quickly, still still hyperventilating like a panicked. Uh, in a panic motion, like he doesn't know what to do. Uh, your turn. Um, would it take the 2d8 from moving around? Oh, you know the... what? I forgot about that. Yes, it would. <laughs> Go ahead and roll it. <laughs> that was 2d89. It does not do uh, it takes that much damage. damage. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, alright. Ouch. Poof, poof, like little little puffs of sonic energy breaking the sound barrier making metal noises in here sorry i got it mixed up with my 89 sided die <laughs> what would you like to do twig as this thing is carrying you around the room at full force threatening to this well by golly it's just threatening twig will just like yellow in panic let me go <laughs> and He's gonna raise his blade for another shot. Alright. Uh, let me just. This is all in like separate, separate screens. Okay, twenty-three hit. Is it going to be another 29? Almost. No. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's see. 26 damage. Alright, Twig. As it is, <clears throat> like, carrying your... Or, you want to move? Stay there? 
Oh wait, you can't get uh, on the stage. I have to stay, yeah. As it is maneuvering around, just spinning you, picking like picking you up in the most awful, painful, puncturing embrace it like it can muster. Just spins you it finally slams you against a barrel and it brings up its two shoulder blade spikes ready poised to puncture down into your into your own shoulders and your collarbone and just shred you into many different feathers and twig pieces how do you want to how do you want to be victorious oh. <laughs> um as Twig, like, stabs into it, it looks like it's on its last legs, and, like, Twig gets slammed into the barrel. And, like, as it approaches to finish Twig off, the thundering effect from Booming Blade, like, just strikes down, and, like, it falls to the floor. Okay. The booming sound of the, of the Booming Blade kind of reverberates around. It just barely covering up the shrieks and wails of this creature uh, that has been left here. <laughs> Before uh, suddenly this like this ailing uh, sorry, endless cacophony of uh, panicked, terrifying noises suddenly and abruptly stops. And it falls down, falls backwards, just <laughs> Breaking more bone snapping noises against the uh, against the, the wooden floor. Uh, needles and pierces, uh, sorry, needles and like spears or spear like protrusions from its body kind of slurping back into it where it once pierced you. Monsters defeated. You there, Twig. Uh, sitting on top of a kind of a workbench that held a couple barrels and some plates. The barrels on the ground, the plates clattered and shattered into a million pieces. Bleeding from uh, several puncture wounds and several new holes in your body that you have found. What would you like to do? <laughs> Twig is just like panting heavily and clutching his side where he was where he was pierced, and he'll drink a healing potion. All right. Mm -hmm. Pops out. A little cork noise. And then glug glug tastes like cherry. Magical cherry. Hmm. <laughs> And then he'll take one last look at the monster on the ground and then start searching underneath the table. Yeah, you uh, search underneath the table. Uh, under each each of the table legs, <coughs> you find uh, a kind of a, um, oh, what's the word for when you're moving furniture, the thing you stick under it? It's got a weird name. It's like snub or like a snoob or something. Anyway, I know you what find, you're talking about. But... Yeah, yeah, like you find yeah. like a little wedge, uh, more like a coaster. You find a coaster that the that the that one shorter table leg uh, is on top of, um, and then like as you're remembering this, the you remember more and more of the joke where Matt Ash was uh, making fun of. Uh, making fun of Jorma and he's made his end of the table just rocky all the time mm -hmm. and uh, he also did that to his chair just like two <laughs> two legs of his chair just cut like an inch off of him uh, didn't like that very much but um, Jorma got so angry that he just uh, pounded the table so hard that it made a hole in the wood and so you guys had to stick a coaster under it <laughs> um, and then uh, in this hole uh is a uh, held previously hidden um, by the coaster on the table leg uh, is a stash is a secret stash twig 
as you look in the secret stash, um, there is a small kind of bundle of cloth. Um, like a little, like, posh cloth, or like a... It appears to be wrapped around something. Um, Twig will pick it up and just slowly unwrap it and Make see it what's inside. Saving throw. No! <laughs> Uh, there is a... Wait, hang on. Sorry, it is a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, which, we'll just use the same thing, but what's the modifier for it? And are you proficient um, in constitution saving throws? I am not, and my modifier is plus two. Okay, uh, so that is a eight plus two is ten. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There is a uh, puff of purplish, like, dark purple, um, arcane magic glare that just and then it, it swirls around your face and then blinks out and you can't see anything. <laughs> you are blind. <laughs> Twig just like looks left, looks right, and then sighs. He, whatever he's holding in his hands, he wraps it back up. Um, oh, you can just... you can feel it though. Um, All right. You you feel this object. Uh, you you unwrap it. It it has the texture of either glass or rock. It's slightly rough, but it's smooth. Um, it, it, it appears, it feels like um, a half circle. Like one, out, uh, one, one side is very round. Um, it's, 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 sorry, it's, it's like a plate. Uh, one side is round, and then the other side is jagged and rough. Uh, and you can kind of trace your talent around some indentations, um, but it's not quite able to kind of put in your mind's eye what it could be. Um, this takes you about a minute, uh -huh. um, and your sight comes back. Okay. Uh, you can see this. Uh, this appears to be some kind of. Uh, um, stone or quartz tablet or slab or some kind of um, architecture. Uh, it is clearly broken. Uh, it, it appears to be um, one half of something. Huh. Uh, there is a note. Has your name on it. Alright. Twig. Put this here because some scary stuff started happening. Not sure what'll come about all this. I had to move. There's two. We could only get one. Twig will finish reading the note and then like take another look at the object before wrapping it back up and placing both in his bag. Quartz. Looks like it has some patterns on it. Uh, plate. Slab, slab kind of shape. Alright. It's it's kind of um uh like coaster sized. It's not big. Um 
with that, Twig's probably gonna try to head back and make it to the to the inn where the rest of the party is. Okay. Try is a good word. Go ahead and roll me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> An animal handling chick. Yeah, roll me animal handling as the I've rat bars your path. I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, you're able to make it back That's, there. Yeah. Uh, that is easy enough to do. Uh, let's see here. Where's Twig? There's Twig. Uh, you can see. Would anyone still be awake? Maybe Pastiche. Maybe. Just you. Zilly is asleep by this time. Uh, it sounds like no one's volunteering, so Twig, you... If you think it's been less than four hours, Pastiche would be awake. Okay. Uh, the amount of time of everybody... Pastiche, you would probably be just finishing up. Okay. Uh, like, you would have seen... Uh, let me backtrack something uh, else then. You would have seen Zalia, like, get up and sit up and kind of put mm-hmm. a, an appendage to her ear. Um, just, like, look in thought for a moment. And... Um, like, say like say things that sound like words quietly to herself. Um, and then uh, she does this maybe... Uh, A few times. Um, not quite sure. Your focus is on on the spell, but like she does mm-hmm. this at least once, um, maybe twice. I'm not gonna bother trying to qu- forget trying to quantify it. She does this, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then she just kind of masses back into sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um. Not much later, past, uh, not much later, Pastiche. Uh, as you're finishing up and you're confident that you've got the uh, the spell translated into your own jargon and technique, um, and you're able to reproduce it uh, when you are uh, painting, who should walk in? But your pal, your Kenku pal, Twig. Oh my goodness, they're dying. <laughs> 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 the door just like creaks open and Twig is standing there like clutching one side his his cloak's like stained dark red a little bit and he just gives like a little wave to Pastiche <laughs> hey Pastiche will look up an exhausted expression on their face T- Twig uh, you returned I have. Just had a bit of a rough night on the town. Uh, are you o- okay? Twig nods. I just need to get some rest. The rest. Pastiche kind of leans their head to one side, to the other, takes a good look at Twig. Well. If you made it back here on your own. I suppose it can't be that bad. Twig will, like, start getting settled in a bed and start saying, Yeah, well, it just... And then he falls asleep, like, before his his head even hits the pillow. (laughs) Good night, Twig. <laughs> All right. Pastiche. What would you like to do? As Pastiche wraps up, uh, they're going to do one more quick test. <laughs> and... A small spot of flame will shoot from their nostrils. Before they collide with the desk. 
head first and pass out. Dreams of exhaling furious gouts of flamethrower fill your uh, fill your sleep and your sleeping mind as you burninate the countryside. You burninate all the wanderers. Happy 20th anniversary, Trogdor. <laughs> Everyone can hit long rest. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> As the lovely sun praised morning arrives in Luxnox, you all come to come to consciousness and uh, acquire delicious and gushy foods. Um, and we'll settle down and uh, collect yourselves downstairs. Soup. Uh, Korakon is also there, chowing down. Um, Zoaz, you can be here too if you like, unless you have something to do. I think Zoaz is on the way. Who? Zoaz? <laughs> Where? On the way. You uh, sound like you're on you're the way. Good. Sorry, I think Zoaz is just on the way. <laughs> yeah, Zoaz is like, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> we, we can hear him from back there. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, let's see. Twig, Chumin, Pastiche, Michaela, and Coricon. You guys have some breakfast time to yourselves. What would you like to do? Twig's uh, chowing down. Uh, Pastiche is eating slowly. Sneaking looks at Twig. Twig, can I have some of your pancakes? <laughs> Twig will pass them over, but he'll give them a longing glance <laughs> as Korakon takes them. Uh, Korakon, um, slides you his um <clears throat> his breakfast platter here you may have some as well uh, perhaps let's even share and he puts the pancakes in the middle and just uh starts digging into this giant like um gnome sized stack of pancakes uh, and then Twig, what, what Korkon slides in front of you to share is uh, bacon wrapped in bacon strips sprinkled with bacon bits. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is everything in this is everything in this in like this? As Twig pops one in, in his mouth. <laughs> then past you, she sneak a glance of a, of a Twig popping some bacon in the mouth. <laughs> Uh, Presumably, I don't see any open wounds. Uh, I think there would be. I mean, sorry. sorry no, go ahead, Twig. You, 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 you tell him. It's your body. <laughs> Maybe not, not open wounds, but some <laughs> blood stains would probably be visible. Human okay. will pick up on it <laughs> and be like, "Uh, and we'll ask Twig." Uh. You had a busy day yesterday, Twig? Twig will swallow and look a bit sad. And he'll say, Well, last night I went to go visit some friends, but none of them were home. There was just a wanderer there instead. And that's how this happened. And he'll, like, motion to the stains. I'm fine, though. Wait, a, a wanderer? 
Well... You didn't recognize them, did you? No, of course not. Uh, but uh, I could... I say wanderer. Relief. I say wanderer, but it wasn't like one I've ever seen before. Who is prepared to explain? It was just a bit more monstrous. More spikes. Mm. Twig will take another bacon bite. It tastes good. It's nice and crispy. <laughs> Refreshing. <laughs> Do you want one, Shuma? Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm not gonna have one and take a bite. It's uh, strong in taste. Uh, not too bad, though. Pastiche and Juman and Michaela's order arrive. <laughs> Zoaz is probably here by now. Bing, bing. I have been muted for the past two hours. Oh, no. oh. Uh Well, Halo of Eating Toast. <laughs> <laughs> That's my contribution. The when your toast is delivered, they mm -hmm. they have this little metal box, uh, a very shiny steel, and they actually prepare it for you right there, Michaela. Oh my goodness. Um, they, they take the like they take these slice sorry, they don't even slice. They take this loaf of bread, like this square uh -huh. thing of bread. It, it it smells delicious. You can just see the flavorful um wafts coming off of it. They like do this little mini shell um where like they're tapping on on the box to the tune. They're like ta 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 and then chop chop and then they make a couple slices of bread then ta, 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 ta. and then they grab a couple pieces of bread and put them in the slot they they push the lever down and then these wires inside get hot and then they make toast but the sparkers come up with these days incredible <laughs> yeah toast <laughs> Uh, there's, there's a little bit more musical show, and then they get a bunch of toast, and then they leave. I thank them for the performance, and there's go also a tub of butter. Try this thing called. <laughs> I take a bite of this thing called toast. <laughs> New and novel. <laughs> it's it's rather novel. Uh, it's no. like. They took bread and then they singed it with a fire spell or something. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is it is crispy and then if you apply the the butter to it as they as the the menu suggests, um, mm -hmm. it gives it a certain flavor and like a certain texture that is rather pleasing. Um, it, it's surely some form of culinary genius. Mm -hmm. The thing is such revolutionary uh, innovation in breakfast foods could be this simple. <laughs> you could see it's very popular. Michaela, mm -hmm. Michaela understands why. She continues munching on toast and sipping tea. And look, there's Zoaz. <laughs> Zoaz shows up with a mug of coffee in one hand and a bagel in the other. Half a bagel, I should say. Greetings, Zoaz. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I trust last night was fine for all of you? Excellent sleep, Skull. Ready for the day. I think everyone else is also adequately rested, uh, especially Pastiche and Twig. Yes, yes. Adequate. Don't think I've ever slept better. Zoaz raises an eyebrow and then walks around the table and sits down. 
Corcon gives you a wink, don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> Crab wing. Pretty powerful. Well, I... Corcon. When are you to actually deliver your package? The <clears throat> we are in Corse? Mm -hmm. uh, in Lux Lux? Oh yeah, that's correct. You can see the package is actually with him. Um he mm -hmm. he just, he pats it with a big old crab claw. Pum, pum. We aim to deliver this as soon as possible. Uh, whether that is today or tonight is up to the Marching Queen's whimsy. Skull. I wanted to wait until everyone was assembled. We could have gone last night. Because you all contributed to this endeavor, I would like to see and ensure that you all are properly rewarded. Skull in attendance, that is. Either riches or uh, you I suppose you could even curry favor with the merchant queen personally just knowing what's in that damned box is payment enough for me been so elusive about it this whole trip <laughs> though I do not speak for anyone else I'm sorry, I could not hear you behind my pancakes. He he, he, he mm -hmm. leans and like, now you can <laughs> see his face. Good. I'm. If the Machine Queen will have us, then I see no reason not to accompany you. Zora says, "Well, she's." Open to audience most days after she's taken her walk around the city. I don't believe there's any special uh, requirements you must meet. Indeed, Zoaz. As you very well know, she is very friendly and open to communication. In fact, that's why she walks around each day. Does the dead ah. when so as uh were you thinking of trying to I suppose deal with the curse issue? today. Ah! You're right. Uh, perhaps we should get that done with now before we visit. Uh, uh Looks around. Not <laughs> here, uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we should do that sooner rather than later. Y yes, indeed. Right. Well, whenever you all are ready. Yeah, I suppose once food has been eaten, we should head back to the room before we step out for the rest of the day. Sounds fine to me. Sounds like a plan. Pastiche, nibbling at their four pepper, three cheese omelette, eyes slightly watering. <laughs> yes. I'll be right with you. At this time, you can see Zalia kind of lurch into the room. <laughs> she looks, she looks sleepily around, sees you all, sits across from Pastiche. Looks at Twig and Korakon, gets up, 
sits between them and just like face plants <laughs> into the bacon platter. Uh huh. And then gets up and leaves. Back upstairs. <laughs> Two waves. Half of the bacon is gone. No! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a morning person she is not. Or has she been the entirety of our journey so far? Right. <laughs> so it looks like she took half a breakfast with her. She comes back down quickly, like swiftly, <laughs> like grabs a pancake with <laughs> and then walks away with it. <laughs> Michaela just shrugs, it's like, she's hungry. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Nice. Oh, presumably you... we're all just about done with breakfast. Yeah, you guys, you can be done whenever you want. Okay. Yeah, Truman is starting to uh, push his chair back. Uh, well, I am done for now, so I guess I will head to the room whenever and meet you guys there when you're ready. Indeed. Then Truman starts heading back to the room. Once Zoaz thinks Truman is out of earshot, he's going to sort of lean closer and say, Ah. Uh, Depending on the type of curse, I may need some help restraining Truman when I try to remove it. Uh, I assume you all will be willing to assist me as best as you are able? Uh, Korokon excluded, of course. I'll volunteer. You see him kind of like raise his <laughs> chitinous uh, forearm and he puts a crab claw over what must be a bicep. <laughs> Twig flexes an arm and says, well, that's how I got my name, you see. I'm as strong Indeed. as an oak. <laughs> okay, they're just like a squints for a very small instant. <laughs> uh, I'm willing to assist in any way. Yeah. Pastiche on the other end of the table. Still powering through the spiciest omelette they've ever eaten. Visibly choking back tears. <laughs> <laughs> if I must. Pastiche, are you alright? Yes, yes. Just training. Just training. <laughs> I see. Training for... A new spell, you see. Uh... Do... Most spells require. I, I am a caster, you might say, but my power comes from Selene. I am not experienced with the ways of wizards. Do, uh, no. do most spells require training such as this? This is the first in my repertoire, <clears throat> which requires a uh, hot pepper, you see. Should we get you a drink? No, no, no. Not Drinks will not be available on the battlefield. Uh, <laughs> they could be. Uh, uh, hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. You know, pastiche, when I think about it. Drinks have been on most of our battlefields, haven't they? Uh, with the healing potions and whatnot. Prepare for the worst. <laughs> Zoaz shrugs and stands up from the table. Twig just nods sagely. <laughs> Stay strong, Pastiche. Pastiche gives a weak thumbs up. Uh, Michaela would 
go to the <laughs> like the barkeep and sort of just like say in a hushed tone if you see that <laughs> if you see that man in the, over there near the corner points the pastiche um or like kind of like gestures towards the pastiche rather uh, if it looks like he cannot go on any longer please just give him a glass of milk and like hey put it on on my tab please I'm sure they I, I fear for him <laughs> we'll we will keep an eye out no worries thank you and she'll head to the room A few minutes will pass before Pastiche follows them. You get a plus one bonus for the next thing you do on Pastiche. Maybe like. Yeah. Shuffling towards the room, Corcon uh, mm -hmm. uh, packs away the pancakes. Uh, gives you a nod, Twig, and scuttles his way up there to join the squad. You can see him kind of like rolling up imaginary sleeves as he gets up to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time yeah, to do I some mean... heavy lifting. Yeah, uh, with any all... luck, your services won't be required. Uh, as you all come in, uh, two minutes, just eyes closed, sitting on the bed, kind of meditating. Zoaz takes a deep breath and approaches Chuman and says, uh, well, hopefully this will not hurt a bit. And is going to cast Remove Curse on Chuman. Okay. Let's see, what does this do? At your touch, all curses affecting one creature or object end. If the object is a cursed magic item, its curse remains. The spell brings the cylinder's attunement to the object so it can be removed or discarded. Uh, you're doing it on Schumann? Schumann's the target? I, uh, I am touching the sword. Oh, okay. Or attempting to, at least. Okay, and touch the amber blade. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, I'm just checking my notes on attunement. Okay. Uh, Zoaz, Itusk, you focus your energies and beseech the divine might of Selene, goddess of the moon. To deliver your companion Chuman away from this curse, this nastiness that is settled into his being. What does remove curse like? Uh, what does remove curse look like? Uh, I think when Zoas touches the blade, there would be. Wispy silver fog rising, like steaming off of it almost. Or or at least, you know, from the sheath. And sort of to... And, and like, like surrounding it, trying to excise the curse. Okay. Remove it from uh, the... From the object itself. Alright. 
And Zoaz does this. Um, so as you reach out and you touch the blade, you hear in your mind, um, you hear something, hang on, <laughs> what? by golly, you hear some stuff. Uh, Four. Let me find, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you touch this, you hear Zoaz, uh, in this kind of, like, raspy, hoarse voice. Um, sounds like they're, uh, like they don't have a whole lot of energy. <laughs> Nameless soul, heed my call. Grasp this hilt if thou hast the courage. As you focus on casting Remove Curse, Ember Blade sounds like you stuck it in a deep fryer, just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Uh, and so, as you feel the sensation of another hand pressing on top of yours. And just kind of interlacing finger uh, fingertips in with your claws, but you open your eyes and um, there's there's no one really there. But you f you feel it all the same, and uh, the ember blade is definitely smoking like it was just used to stoke some embers, just the that awful, not really awful, like that stir-fry sound, that that sizzling sound dies down, and you, um, um, remove, you bring your claws back, that sensation goes away, um, of just another, and, um, Remove curse. Remove curse just kind of works. There's no DC or anything, so. <laughs> well, Chumun, if you would drop the blade. Uh, Chumun, you are you are able to do this without thinking that that's the worst idea you've ever heard. Uh, it's up to you if you do it, though. You're your own person. Hold on. We use my new dice that I got. The new dice. Yeah, the new private dice. Show us the new dice, but also turn up the volume on your microphone. Yeah. I walk, I uh, look down. There's new private dice that I picked up. Oh, private dice. Um. Tune You said it was sort of smoking, correct? Yeah. Just to make sure. Well. At the time, I think right now it would be done. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think because Chuma had his eyes closed the entire time, so he's still like when he when it feels as if it's smoking, he starts thinking of fire, and he just instinctively drops it, drops it onto the ground. Um, without oh. thinking before you say anything. <laughs> I also said the wrong thing earlier. You you did it to the Ember Blade. Uh, this breaks Chumin's attunement. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, Chumin just you're like Chumin's broken, broken. You don't even like <laughs> what I said earlier. Doesn't even have it. Doesn't even have a chance. Uh, you are no longer attuned to the Ember Blade. You have six stacks of weariness. Oh. Oh. Let's go. Oh, Oh boy! <laughs> uh, I think around this time, Pastiche would return to the room. And at that moment, uh, Chubin uh, would kind of fall limp and lean on the back of the wall. Uh, Did you drop the sword? Yeah, yes. Sword, sword okay. Okay. Uh, so the 
flame. You you all instinctively look towards Chuman's chest. Um, the flame over his heart. Dot dot dot. Is gone. Past the, seeing the emerald blade on the floor. Uh, so it went well. Uh, Schumann, are you all right? It seems the curse is broken, at least. It. It takes a second for Schumann to hear what you're saying. Um. It, uh, it, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, I, I'm okay. Yeah. No longer feeling any urge to. What was it? Go and slay innocent souls or something? Human can just only shake his head. Well, Good. for now, uh, I suppose we should wrap up the blade and somehow keep it safe in a way that does not require having someone become its owner. Can I have it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're no fun, so uh... That's one of my best qualities. Unless you suddenly have a form of containment and storage for this that doesn't involve, I guess, picking it up. Because I believe that's all you did. Right, Truman? You didn't... Do you remember taking any specific actions or thoughts to... When you it's, held the blade? It only attaches to you when you, you physically touch it. I would rather not go through the process of breaking the curse. That would be pretty cool. Grab with a flame sword. <sighs> It would be pretty cool. <laughs> Wait, what am I <laughs> saying? It is a bad idea. I knew I Image was striking. <laughs> While striking I have an image, I don't think wise. Uh... It seems to sap your strength if the, the curse is broken off. Uh, hmm. I feel even more tired than I was yesterday. I think Zoaz is going to carefully extricate his bedroll from his stuff and using it as sort of like makeshift, like he, he's touching the sword through the bedroll, he's going to try to wrap it up in the bedroll. Okay. Within the sheath. If possible. The... Uh, sheath is currently on Juman's side, so you just unbuckle it. He, he's too weak to resist yeah, yeah. anyway. You're... <laughs> I'll just roll over if you pull it. Aren't you the strongest person in the group? We Me? don't know Korokon's strength. <laughs> I, I only have 12 strength. Uh, what do you mean, only 12 I, strength? Oh, sorry, oh, my bad. The muscles over there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not quite, <laughs> but you're you're a you're a serious contender. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're you're able to do this. So you you, you grab the bedroll, um, you un, un uh, unbuckle the the sheath, nice ornate, um, fancy looking thing uh, from Chuman's side, and kind of slide and manipulate 
the golden blade of um, what you call it, Ember Blade, <laughs> the 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 golden blade of the eponymous sword that's in our logo. Um, slide it in and uh, it, it has a satisfying click when it gets in there and you roll it up it is now wrapped up in lemons is there any uh, disembodied voice in Zoe's head a deep fried disembodied voice would you like there to be <laughs> no <laughs> no there is no like Okay. Like a was here, she would oh. say coward. <laughs> she would. Roll a, you can just roll the dice for it. <clears throat> uh, Zaz clears his throat and says, Well, uh, okay. while doing that, it did not seem to set it off. So I suppose as long as there's no direct contact with the weapon itself, like Chuman said, uh, you should be fine. Uh. Mm -hmm. He sort of picks it up, and Zoas looks like if there were nuclear weapons in this world, it would—it looks like Zoas was holding one. <laughs> is the sort of expression he has on his face right now. Looks holding he, the, he, he, a, he's a holding between it. the two sides of the oh, <laughs> the demon core, yeah. Oh my god! Zoas is like holding it like across his hands, like in front of his chest, and he's just sort of like looking around through the room, not exactly sure what to do with it. Uh, well, question, Excel. Help. Um, when Chuman picked up the sword, we felt like some sort of connection to it as well, right? Right. Like that's, 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 that's where the Rebirth. flame of rebirth feature comes from. Do we still feel that, or do we yes. do that feel severed in any way? No. Uh, you okay. all have this this connection still, or like that you all you all still have the fl the flame of rebirth feature, and mm -hmm. um, you still feel slightly empowered. I see. Okay. <clears throat> well, not uh, slightly is not the correct word. I didn't need to throw that extra word in there. Um, you still feel empowered. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well. Uh, and just as a refresher, um, all of you, uh, as adventurers, um, you're familiar with how attuning to magic item works. Uh, and it's just, it's instant and on touch. Or, or it's instant and on, on like properly holding it. In this case, mm -hmm. the handle of the weapon. Oh, it's attuned to stuff? Okay. Um, that's that's a specific role for us. Got it. Um, well, well, uh, I suppose I could put it into my pack, but uh, or or strap it on with my gear. But uh, to be honest, I'm not exactly comfortable with hanging on to this. Is anyone else? Is it? Zoaz looks at Zalia. That doesn't already have two magical weapons, and would perhaps be liable to test them out on things. Interested in t holding on to this for now? The crab merchant instantly holds out its claw. <laughs> Korokon. Hello. I would like to volunteer, Skull. Would you sell the Ember Blade to the highest bidder? How much are we talking? <laughs> you can't have the Ember Blade. Oh, please. No. no. This weapon is not a lo joking matter. Indeed. Well, <laughs> if anyone else were to screw up, we do need you sane to remove the curse, Zoaz. That's, that is a, I, that's a good that point. Is a point. Uh, I'll hold on to it. Zoaz, thanks for a moment. I like to Raises imagine your face is still, like, red. Like, eyes are still teared up. 
Und was weiß ich. <lacht> yeah. A little bit of snot running down their nose. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> Zoas yeah. nods. Yeah, walks over it. to Pastiche and hands the tightly wrapped ember blade to them. <laughs> Pastiche takes it with both hands. Uh, kind of plants it on the ground. And then grabs a small length of rope from a pouch, which they use to wrap the bedding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what do th what do they do with it? Just throw it over their shoulder. Oh. <laughs> Carry it around. <laughs> Ryu style. Okay. Uh, you look perhaps. like you're ready for eternal battle, Pastiche. <laughs> well, it's, it's wrapped in um, bedding, right? So it's just like, it looks like a bedroll. Yeah. On, on his back. Mm -hmm. The hair okay. on his back. Well, I suppose that looks innocuous as anything else. Oh. You cannot be serious. At the least in a bag. I, I don't understand. What's the problem? Well, for now, it's the best we have. They and... think to look through a bag. Feels better. True. Uh, we can find a better container for it later, I assume. It is Lux Knox. It's... Sure, there's plenty of merchants selling things to store it in, but for now, this is our best our best way of doing so. Unless you have some bright ideas, Chuman? I suppose there's no choice. It's just whoever stole it from my empire obviously is still attempting to track it. Well, surely they wouldn't expect to find it on a simple artist like myself. Human glares <laughs> at pastiche. Who would ever pastiche expect? Grins a one toothy the... smile. Who would ever expect one of the land's most legendary weapons to be in possession of such a regular mundane artists such as Andy. Mm -hmm. Precisely. <sighs> Carry on. I am too tired to fight with you guys anyway. That's right. You look like you need more rest. Will you be all right? I'll make do with it. Oh, well, I'll rest here for a little while longer today. You have to get some coffee or tea, something at least. To start your day like this, gestures vaguely at you. Uh, it's a rather unfortunate way to start. I wonder if it would be possible to collect the reward for Schumann so that he could continue to rest. If you could, that would be much appreciated. Yeah. At, at the very least, if if not, I would be willing to to split mine so that you are not left out. But, uh, I suppose we would have to ask the queen herself. I'll, I'll leave it to you, Zoas.
Sure, you can make it work. Zoaz just sort of hesitantly nods and then looks Thanks. to the rest of the group and says, well, so does management, surely. Sh shall we be off? Legendary relic of an ancient age uh, in tow. After you. And Zoaz is going to step out of the room. And that's where we'll end tonight's session. <laughs> Yahoo! Big. 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 Big.